and welcome to the 2011 USDGC. Liz, we're on the hallowed grounds of Winthrop Gold, and it is just another beautiful day. The weather couldn't be better for these guys. That's right. I see blue sky, no sign of clouds yet. Uh, wind is down. It's morning time, and there is a vibe that is in the air today. Well, this is a little different. I mean, this is the performance edition, but the hype, the buzz is still up, and the play, I mean, the ropes are tight. I see lots of butts puckered. Oh yeah, you know, and all these players are gonna get a chance to play with you know, some of the best names out here if they can play to their performance level. Well, you hear us talking about the performance level. Here's the TD of the USDGC, the co-TD, Adrian Southern, and he's gonna to try to explain exactly how the scores are gonna be kept this year. Well, what a beautiful day here, Monday at the USDGC. I've run down Adrian Southern. He is the co-TD at this year's event. Adrian, how are things starting to unfold here? Uh, really interesting. We had a great turnout today. A lot of people enthusiastic to qualify for this year's USDGC Performance Edition. Right, and now, Performance ahead. Edition. Now, I, I want you to take our audience into a little bit in depth about what the Performance Edition means and what they can expect to see out of some of the players this week. Uh, it's really simple, really. We use a bunch of, uh, we, we basically generate a projected score based on skill level, uh, the course layout, uh, to let everybody know what they're expected to shoot. We call that their projected score. Projected score, all right. And then they can find this information on your website. Uh, yes, they can look uh, throughout the week on USDGC. We'll be posting information about how this works, uh, a little bit more about where it came from, and you can follow it live in our scoring app uh, throughout the tournament. All right, great. Well, we will be looking forward to that. Now, let's say a player, give us a scenario. Let's say, let's talk about John Smith. John Smith is projected to shoot a 75. John Smith goes out and shoots a 69. What does he walk away with? Let's see if I can do the math on that. Uh, well, that would be six under. Um, so everything is relative to his projected score. He's really just trying to best uh, what we've put out there for him to be. All right. Um, so that's what we call his performance for the day, and that's what we compare with each player uh, to determine uh, not only qualifiers today, but the winner of the championship this year. That's right. This is 2011, the performance edition of the United States Disc Golf Championship. Adrian Southern, I'm glad you got a chance to explain to the audience what's going on with this tournament. We hope to I'd be asking you questions all week long. Thank you very much. Well, Liz, I mean, Adrian basically is telling us that the only number that really matters is that projected number. And if you shoot an 80, or if you're projected 80, you shoot a 75, then you're a minus five for the day. And that's really the only number that seems to matter this week. Yep, yeah, and according to him, it's gonna be in the furthest column over on the right, you know, and they've, they're keeping up with the scores online. It is essential that you, know, you can't judge someone based on their round score. You have to really look at that performance level. So again, Adrian Southern, he knows what's going on. He's got it all on his website. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how that comes into play this all week long. Well, we are at the USDGC. This is all about the players. Here's some player talk from the PDGA. Well, welcome to PDGA Player Talk. I've tracked down Kevin Burgess here. And Kevin, you participated in the qualifying rounds today. Where'd you come from to be able to do that? Uh, just 20 minutes up the road in Charlotte, Queen oh. City. All right. Yep. And uh, I mean, you know these courses pretty well. How did it go out there for you today? Well, it's tough. I mean, everybody in Charlotte knows this course, but they don't know it with the ropes. So it makes for a challenge. So did you notice any difference in the ropes this year? No, not at all. No? No, it's still hard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's part of the challenge out here. Absolutely. All right, this is Kevin Burgess with your PDGA Player Talk. Well, we've just tracked down Clay Held. Clay, where are you coming from? Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington, not, not North Carolina. All right, so how many, uh, not a long commute, what is that, a couple hours? Three and a half, four. It gets faster every day because they keep building interstates. So. How long have you been here practicing? Uh, about three hours. Three hours, that's yep. it. Game day tomorrow, right? Yep. All yep. right, well, what's your favorite hole out here? Oh, favorite, that's a tough one. Probably uh, five. Ooh, that's a long, hard hole. I'm one. not saying I can play it. <laughs> I'm just saying it's one of my favorites. So with that hole, are you going to go across the water? Are you going to go around the big bank of trees? I've got some landing zones laid out, and if I'm in the right zone, I'll go across. I got one zone to go for the basket, one to just get across on the short side, and one to take a safety shot and play up. All right, well, there's the plan for hole number five. Hopefully it'll work out for you, Clay. Yeah. Good luck this week. Thanks, Liz. Well, I'm here with a guy you may not recognize, 
but he has a lot to do with your favorite event. This is the technology director, Steve Hackenberg. Steve, you've actually been trying to get live feeds and, and the live scoring from 1999 on. I mean, it's been an ambition of yours. And it's really amazing at, at all the media and how far you've come. Yeah, well, it couldn't happen without a, a lot of great um, people behind the scenes, too. You know, we tried a couple different things early on when technology wasn't quite there yet. Um, these days, things are dialed in well, as you, you guys well know. Well, with this new performance edition, mm. Talk about crunching some numbers. Uh, you're the guy that the nightmare is really going to fall on because you know even though Adrian's in charge of all that, all these numbers have to flow through you and your people right. and get back out. What kind of challenge has that been presenting for you guys? Do you feel like you're on top of it? Um, I do. This, yeah, you're right. The performance numbers this year is um, a new set of data we haven't we haven't contended with in the past. So, um, but Adrian's done a great job on putting together the system for the calculations. So once they get to us. Um, they're they're pretty much solid and we feel pretty confident about it and I, I think heard a lot of good things yesterday the players seemed pretty confident that the numbers and the calculations for their performance ratings were good um, so things seem to show that in scores yesterday too so we're pretty pleased and excited about this tournament well we'll see how it goes all week long not only is he the technology director he's vice president of Innova and he's one of the reasons that you guys love this sport so much Steve thanks for your time You're welcome thanks Billy all right, I've tracked down a world champion, Dean Tannick. Dean, are you playing this week? No, uh, no, not playing this year. Um, actually, just come up here and spend a week and volunteer and try to give back. You know, I've been playing since 03 out here, you know, enjoying and loving the course and, and just trying to give back a little bit of what's given me over the years. So, and seeing some of these smiling and, and faces out here and let them enjoy it for once. So. That's right. You know, it's an entirely different format this week. Um, and I see a lot of other pro players coming in to help, just like yourself. Yep. What's it like being the other guy here? Well, it's, it's kind of odd. Like I said, it's such, it's such a beautiful pristine course it's really you know what we strive for every year to to come and, and qualify for but uh, it's 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 kind of odd looking at looking at the other direction you know and letting other people play it and and uh but it, it's really it's it's gonna be interesting this year and like i said you know let 150 other people enjoy it you know let them experience what all the pros have been experiencing all these years so sure so absolutely so of all the jobs here what's going to be your favorite job what is the one where do you want to spot the most what well, do you want to do this week I, i'd love to fall around and help marshall and keep score or something you know mm. watch all the action so, sure but you know everybody has to give back every every little bit where they can so uh so, you know, just whatever they need me for, so. Absolutely, well, we know we need every volunteer we can this week, and right. thank you so much, Dean Tannick, oh, no world problem. champion, helping you out this week at the USDGC. Well, all right, we've been able to track down the amateur world champion this year. This is Kenny Glassman. He has already cashed in his first pro event. He's here to stay. Kenny, you're at the USDGC. What? How, you like it? Do you like the course so far? Yeah, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, the course is amazing. A lot of tight ropes, a lot of OB out there, but it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I uh, just got to play safe. How far was your commute? Um, I flew out here, but I came all the way from Chicago, so it's quite a ways away. Um, but I'm real happy to be here. Yeah, now is this your first time actually running this track? Uh, yeah, this is my first time here. The only course I've played uh, in the state is the Hippodrome for the Collegiate Championship, so excited to play this course. So. This is really it. This is where I came for. And do you feel any pressure being a, a amateur world champion? Do you feel like you really have to perform here, or are you um, easy going? Not a lot of pressure. I just want to shoot um, below my projected score. But really, it's just the experience coming out to play this course. That's what it's all about. Well, a lot of great players are out there. You already have a world title. Maybe you can go get yourself a national title, too. Yep, thanks for interviewing. Yep, thanks, Kenny Glassman. Bye. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed getting a chance to meet some of the players. That was your PDGA player talk. Well, we got something special for them now. That was really all we were going to do, but this is the USDGC. We're going to give you some live action. Here's the five-time champ, Ken Climo, and some live action on hole number 16 at the USDGC Wednesday afternoon. Well, we have picked up here the five-time US champ, the 12-time world champ. This is Ken Climo's group for you guys. This is hole number 16 on Winthrop Gold. That's right, Billy, and, and you know, as we go here, you can see the shadows are getting long. This is a dark fairway. These players have been out here for five hours now. Whew, it's been a long day here at Winthrop. Well, this is 391. It's a little downhill, and the standard on this hole is a huge anhyzer. But in years past, they have really started penetrating the straight line, and the OB is getting tighter and tighter. Well, it, you know, that straight line keeps getting more open, but again, it looks like Ken Climo is going to take the anhyzer line. It looks... Oh, that looks great, Liz. 
Just yeah, to... great shot. It's, it's going to stay in bounds just fine. He is going to be just at the circle's edge. All right, our next shot. Uh, again, there's two lines to take here. He looks like he's a little left-handed, so this is going to be a, a relatively easy shot for him, although he cut it I off short. I believe that's Michael Burton. Oh, he's hit the tree and just come down. Oh, shoot, this is his chance, too. That was a left-handed shot. Well, we've got Michael Burton, Ken Climo, the Am World champ, who's making his way to the tee right here. That's young Kenny Glassman. I actually, no, that is not Kenny Glassman. That's Donald Perkins. Donald Perkins. Now, he's going to line his sidearm up here. And if you've got the big sidearm, I know Avery loves to throw the sidearm on this hole. Oh, yeah. If you swing it wide enough, you've got plenty of fairway to work with. However, these guys aren't taking advantage of that huge space out there. Well, here's the Am World Champ 2011 in Rochester. This is Kenny Glassman having the day of his life playing around at the US. Oh, DGC yeah, he's going the Ken Climo line, and he is going to be a little bit more. However, a great shot right in the middle. Let's follow him as they make their way down to the tee here on hole number 16 at Winthrop Gold. Well, look at those guys. They all look tired as they make their way down to hole number 16. Again, they're going to figure out who's out. Who's... I believe this is Donald Perkins now on this side and just looking to get up and down. His projected score is an 80. So he's just, a three would be fine right here. He just wants to get up and down. Yep, that's all he's got to do. He's well outside the circle. I'd say he's uh, 100 feet or so. It's good Great looking shot. pot. It's, uh, it's up in the air. 15 feet away, that's what he's looking for. Well, Michael moving in now, Michael Burton, his projected score was a 79. And Kenny with a pretty good group here, even though he is 16 strokes projected ahead of Michael, he is really having fun out there today, Liz. You're right. Now, Michael Burton, he just looks like, although he looks like he's making a run at it, um, lining himself up that way, he can. It's a level green. It goes uphill a little bit behind it. It's a good, good bit. You just want to get it up, and that's really all you want to do, chip it right up on the green. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Kenny Glassman now. I can't wait to figure out what his score is. He's playing hot this year, and all he has to do is keep it together on this tournament and shoot just a little bit better than his normal rating. Well, you know, Kenny's thinking of golf is safe, and that is exactly what you've got to have out here. So I look for him to at least hold his own out here. Kenny Glassman, it's up in the air. That's got Looks a chance, good. Liz. Oh, just hits the front of the cage and rolls back, but... Great bid by Kenny Klassman. All right, speaking of Ken's, it's Ken Climo's turn for try to get a two. Uh, the champ's going to move in. He's been here many, many times. This is the first round. This is Wednesday afternoon. And he is, quite simply, an icon in the sport. And these guys are having the day of their life. Here's the champ. This is for birdie two. No, oh, off the front of the top of the cage. Not a real happy look on any of these gentlemen's faces as they make their way closer to the basket. Well, been five plus hours. They've still got two holes to go. Uh, the standard round out here is a little over four hours. We're probably going to be pushing five and a half to six hours with some of these groups. And I tell you, it is just difficult to maintain your focus for that long, Liz. You know, you bet. These guys are grinding all day. Oh, good putt there by Donald Perkins. Kenny, and Kenny Glassman looking to finish up his putt. He had a birdie attempt as well. It hit off the front of the cage, rolled back to that spot. Now he's got to tap in for a three. Boy, if the Kens could have just mixed it up there. And Kenny was a little too low. Big Ken, the champ, a little too high. Come. All right, I think we should go check out some action on hole 17. Follow this card and see what the, they have in store. Well, Liz, I mean, what a day. The sun is almost down. You're right, the shadows are long. There are exhausted faces, absolutely worn out arms. It's been a long day for everyone here at the USDGC. Well, we've brought you some action, live action from the champ. We've also let you meet some players, but the big story of the day, I mean, the performer of the day, David Feldberg shooting his six under par. That's right. That's a raw score of him for a uh, 57, I believe. Very hot. Great shooting. He said that that is the lowest he's ever shot here. Um, he's tied performance-wise with David Wiggins. Following him is uh, John Olis out of Oregon, and he's just not far behind. He's sitting at four under. So the projection right now, uh, Dave 
having the hottest round of his life on the property. Oh, right. He's going to need to do that three more times to obtain where he's at, I believe. You bet. And that's going to be hard to do, let alone throw those type of phenomenal rounds. But to have somebody on your card that is not throwing those phenomenal rounds that you have to watch the whole time. And while you're trying to put your best game together, this person maybe isn't necessarily putting their best game together. He, these guys are digging deep. They're going to pull out the best shots that they can. Well, one of the special things that we'll do all week long here at the USDGC is the performer of the day will be awarded. And today's performer, top performer, was David Feldberg. And Rolling Thunder, he actually donated a check in his name to Rolling Thunder. And Dave got to take a ride around the lake. That was a, a little sweet more chopper. A tricycle, oh my wasn't goodness, it? that was a trike. It was a, a crazy hog. It looks like it almost had a truck engine powering it. I know that they had to do a lot to go that slow around the lake, but David Feldberg, he got himself a ride. David Wiggins Jr. could have gotten himself a ride if he had stuck around, but they're both the top performers of the day. And, you know, hopefully, I know they both want to be the top performers all week long. Well, they'll be teeing off late tomorrow afternoon, which is good for little Dave Wiggins and his school situation because he's driving back and forth to High Point. Now, it's going to be a busy week all week long not only do we have a clinic going on right now the biomechanics clinic from Dave but we've got a clinic every night we've got great action every day and there's a top performer going to be awarded every day that's a little different than years past well that's right you know this is a charity tournament they're giving money to charities every day the top performer in their name will donate a check to that charity today again it was Rolling Thunder supporting the POW and uh, MIAs. MIAs absolutely a great organization um, they're traveling all over the country trying to collect money for their organization and you know we're happy to help out they've sent in the past 60 or more volunteers just to help out with this tournament um, we're happy to see them again this year well i'm billy crump i'm liz carr and we're going to be here at the usdgc for you all week long for the last putt drops you said we go for a ride you said it was out back